You survived that part of your mask. Now it's time to build up your design for your mask with cardboard, newspaper, building materials. Let's do it! Alright, so here we're going we're gonna to look at how to make these masks. Here we have a picture of Kenny as a mask. The original face is in here. This is Alvaro's. And we're going to use cardboard and newspaper to build this up. So this would be a rounded form. So I'm going to take this big piece of cardboard. You don't want, if you're making a one large piece, you don't want a piece with a crease in the center or a fold. You don't want a corner on it. Okay, so you start with making the lines that you want to cut. And when I'm making something I want symmetrical, I will cut one side or draw, draw one side cut it, and then fold it in half to get the other side. So I think this side is better than that side. Yes. Except it needs to be a little bit more of an oval than what I have. So maybe a little bit less. And then you have two different cutting tools to choose from here. You can use an X-Acto blade. The way the X-Acto blade works, if the blade comes out, it's because this is twisted. So there's a rough area here. Turn it to the left, and the blade comes out. Turn it to the right, righty tighty, lefty loosey. You gotta turn the blade. Then it tightens up. So if your blade comes off, that's all you have to do. Then when you use an X Acto blade, you don't try to cut through on the first cut. You have to go over the same cut two to three times, depending on how thick your material is. So I'm going to cut this side off and then I'll fold it to get the other side symmetrical. So that's my first cut. Let's see if I can get this on the second cut. Now, especially my gentlemen in class, every year somebody thinks that it would work best if they put the cardboard and the X-Acto blade on their lap. All right, guys, you don't really have to be a genius to figure this out. But if you put your X-Acto blade, look over here. If you're cutting like this, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Not very smart. Don't do that. You need to hold your X-Acto blade like this. Don't hold it like this. You can lose control of it like that. And don't, don't cut like this. My finger's right there. I'm going to lose a thumb. So I, this actually is going to need three cuts. I cut it around. And then I'm going to cut that part off. And then I'll fold it over to get it symmetrical and then trace that side. And then cut that. Alright, I'm going to use my scissors this time. I think it's actually going to be faster for me to use my scissors. Some of the cardboard is really thick. Awkward positions are sometimes easier just to cut with scissors. Then, we're going to round that out. So then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to make pleats. I'm going to cut in pleats. They're about an inch apart, these little wedges or little slits that I'm cutting in. And then I want to soften up my cardboard so I can round this out. So then I'm going to roll it up, start softening up that cardboard, roll it up the other direction too. Yeah, hindsight being 2020, I probably should have just rolled it up before I cut it, but whatever. It'll work. Okay, then to make this curve around, after I get it nice and bent up, I'm going to take my tube, and I like to make a whole bunch of little pieces on the table so that I don't have to stop and rip off the tape as it goes faster for me. And then I'm going to take these pieces and I'll fold them together and then I'll tape it so that it starts to round that out. It's going to start rounding the edges. Now if this needed to be even more rounded, you just make these 
cuts a little bit deeper. So I lay one, just overlap a little bit over the next one, and that'll round out the entire piece. Then everywhere that you put, that you use cardboard, you're going to cover that with plaster gauze. So you can use as much tape as you need to smooth things out to get them into shape. And then we'll plaster gauze over the top of that. Then once he gets the whole thing done, then he was going to lay his mask in the center and decide how much space he needs. So I would trace this. I would trace his mask on the back of it first to see what the overall shape is. And then he needs to decide how big a space he wants showing on the inside. He will cut that out. And when he cuts it out, he needs to leave a tab. Anywhere that you're putting a piece of cardboard, or yeah, anywhere you're putting a piece of cardboard on your mask, or a card, piece of cardboard attached to another piece of cardboard, you need to make yourself a little tab. So I'm not gonna cut this all the way. I'm gonna cut, and then I'm going to do these <coughs> lines in again. I'm gonna cut lines in. So that I have a little tab to attach to. I understand that the uh, desire to take a shortcut with this X-Acto blade. I also understand that it hurts really bad when you cut yourself with an X-Acto blade. So follow my directions. And then I would bend it back until I got the shape that I wanted. And then I would have a space. I have these pieces here to put the hot glue on. And then I would attach that to the mask after I got that all cut out. Right, so that's basically his. And for the eyes on this one, he doesn't want you to be able to see his eyes. So what you do for the eyes is you take some window screen, you take some, some cardboard, and you're going to make a little window out of the cardboard, the shape that you want your eyes to be. You put the window screen. This is a, oh plastic kind of window screen. It's not the wire. The wire works fine too. I recycle all kinds of stuff and if I see window screens in the, in the trash, I totally grab them for our projects. Then you take your hot glue. Now this, clearly, clearly this, you can see through it. So that means that the, plastic, the uh, hot glue is totally going to go through it and burn you. So you need to get a little piece of cardboard and you will hot glue your piece that you're putting your plastic or that you're putting your window screen on and then use that little piece of cardboard to flatten it on there. When you're using the hot glue gun, make sure that your hand is not, don't, don't try to hot glue something like this. Don't put your hand underneath and try to hot glue. If you do, the first thing you need to do is go to the sink and put your hand in cold water. What you're going to want to do is peel it off. You, I know it's kind of counterintuitive, but you need to go to the sink and, and get that in cold water, and then you can peel it off. Also, please do not make fun little designs on the table with your hot glue gun. That's wasteful. Also, don't burn the hot glue sticks that aren't in the glue gun, because when you burn them, you ruin them. All right, so then I would just hot glue that on where I wanted that shape. Then later he can paint this. He'll plaster gauze over this part, not the screen, but just this part. Then he can paint this and then blow out the paint on the negative spaces so he can see through it. For his eyes, he wants his eyes to pop out. So to make a sphere, take a piece of newspaper and you want to take two pieces the same size, wad it up. Do not do this. See how much volume I get out of that one piece of paper? Okay, believe it or not, people actually try to do this. They try to fold up the paper to try to get the volume. I'm sorry, I should be more nice, I should be nicer about that, but th that's just dumb. Don't, don't do that. That, that. that makes no sense at all. You wad it up and then you use your tape. If 
anytime you're doing multiples, make sure you get both of them done before you glue anything on. So you take your tape and you lightly go around your sphere and keep going around it until it's the shape that you want it. Then make your second one and make sure you've got the right size. Make sure that they're the same size. If you want two objects the same and you make them before you attach them. And then he would hot glue that on. I'm thinking that perhaps instead of right over the eye, he might want to put his eyes up here so that you can still see, he doesn't have to figure out how to see through this big sphere. Then you hot glue that on, cover that with plaster gauze. All right, that's that one. <clears throat> this one is mostly going to be cardboard. This is Nikki's. And we're going to start with a big piece of cardboard on this mask. Now, don't take a really big piece and cut a piece out of the middle of it. That's just a waste. Make sure that you're using the right size cardboard. All right, so I need a piece at the top and two pieces at the bottom here. And I have to account for a little tab on there too. So I'm going to draw it on first. I'm going to draw the edge of the face first edge of the mask and then I'm going to draw on my triangle like that okay this is the edge of the mask right here so I need to come in a little closer and this is going to be the tabs you have to include a tab if you forget to include a tab then you need to take a piece of cardboard and hot glue it on so you have a tap. If you try to attach a piece of cardboard straight on like that, there's no surface area to attach that to. You have to make sure that you've got a little tab to attach. Okay, So I'm going to cut out my triangle for the top. And then I'm going to cut out my tabs. Now, if you don't want to wear your mask, then the tabs can go on the inside of your mask. If you do want to wear your tab, don't put the. Or if you do want to wear your mask, don't put the tabs on the inside because the, it won't be the same shape as your face. It won't fit your face exactly anymore. And then I cut my little lines up to make my tabs, and I'm going to fold those over. And I'm going to hot glue those on where I want the triangle at the top. If I want the triangle at the top more tilted in, then I just move how I place my tabs. If I want it folded a little bit back, same thing. Now remember, you have to put it on the wall, so the back of it needs to be fairly flat. It could have a little bit of dimension, but it's going to be resting against the wall. Then I'm going to hot glue it. on my triangle. If you make a mistake, you get something on there and you decide you don't like it, just take it off. It's not a big deal. Just be careful not to rip your mask. Okay. Then for the bottom half, he needs two more triangles at the bottom. I would make one triangle, trace it, and then cut it out and make the other triangle. For his diamond at the top, and the diamond, he wants a big ruby right here. I would start with a diamond shape. And I want that symmetrical, so I'm going to fold that in half. And then, oh. Clearly that's too big, it needs to be smaller than that. And then I would build it up with some more cardboard to make it more three-dimensional so it comes up in the center. And that would just take a little bit of practice and some problem-solving skills. 90% of this project is problem-solving skills. I'm not going to bail you out to figure stuff out. You're going to have to figure some stuff out yourself. 
For this diamond, I would cut into this and just practice a little bit and see if I could make this a little bit more three-dimensional with the cardboard and just see how that works. So he just needs to play with that, come up with his ruby shape, make sure he has tabs, and hot glue it on. Okay. The next one is a bowl. For the horns, I would cut this shape out of cardboard. I cut two of them before I attach them. And then I would hot glue them on with my tabs, make sure you have your tabs, and then wad up some newspaper and tape that on. The ears, I would make those out of cardboard. This is the tricky part right here. So he's gonna have to figure out a side view of that. He has a small drawing here of his side view. Looks something like that little picture right there look at his mask and figure out how much of that space of his mask that nose needs to come off of. So about that far. I'm going to use the edge. Actually, no, I'm going to go in the middle because it has to flare out. And then hold that up and try to decide how long does he want that to be. I don't think it needs to be too terribly long. And then just start piecing it together and see what works. I'll do one side first, I'll fold it and make it symmetrical. And the bowl, mammals have a ridge, and a bowl is a mammal. Mammals have a ridge on their nose, and it's not entirely flat. So I also made, notice that the grain of the cardboard, you can see here, where you can see the end of the grain, here you can't see the end. You want to go with the grain of the cardboard, so like grains of wood. It's the same concept. The lines go this way. So I'm going that way so that I can bend it. I'm going to go ahead and trace it so I get it symmetrical. And then I'll bend it a little bit to make it a little bit more natural looking. And then place it on and start building up from there. Now, I also need to put on my tabs. So when you put your tabs on, on a piece like this, draw my guideline on, and I'm going to score it. I'm not going to cut all the way through with my X-Acto blade, I'm just going to score it. So I'll lightly score. Scoring means that you don't go all the way through. You just cut one thin layer so that it bends easily. And I also need to cut in some pieces here so that it bends well for me. And then I would hot glue it, bend it, hot glue it on. That's right about doll. Easier said than done, apparently. And hot glue it on, and then start building up all the individual pieces of the mask. Now, for this part here, where he has like the, this detail above the eyes. First of all, the eyes are a nice shape, but they're not the shape of his mask. So he would need to make some eyes the shape that he wants them. So he'll draw on the shape of eye that he wants. Like that. I actually think I need it a little bit bigger. Do I need it bigger? Uh, that, that, that eye looks like like Spider-Man now. Maybe that's not quite the shape. Let's see. I'm going to cut this one out and trace it onto two other pieces. You want to look at the thickness of your cardboard too. The cardboard I'm using right now is pretty thick. I'm not sure if that's going to bend very well over the eye, so I'm going to find a slightly thinner piece, might be a little bit more flexible. Draw that eye back on and then I'm going to go around it because on the last one you really won't see, this one I did over here. You're not going to see too much of that eye, so I didn't bother to go too close around it. 
But this one, you re the eyes are going to be a focal point, so you have to make sure that you do it that way. You want to make sure that's going to be part of your, your details. So then I would glue on a piece of wire mesh. I would cut two of these out first, glue on the, the wire mesh, and then glue those on in place. Then for the top part, up here, I would use a piece of newspaper, and I would make both of these pieces at the same time. Now if this is too big, Instead of starting all over, you could just try to squish it with some more tape and make it a little bit thinner. So let's go ahead and attach this side. So we're going to make him take this all off and trace it for the next side, for the other side. Sorry, Turnell. You thought you, got, you thought you made a score there. Not so much. Okay, remember when you're hot gluing this wire mesh on, don't, don't touch it. Don't touch the hot glue. And if you do touch the hot glue, go to the sink, get cold water on it, and then peel it off. Then I have burn cream if you need it. Do not play around with the hot glue gun. If there's one person at the hot glue station, don't go there. Don't crowd each other at the hot glue station. I will have two hot glue stations for you. If there's something that you can do without hot glue, then go ahead and do something else with it instead. All right, so there's the eye. And then I would hot glue this up here. It's starting to, to be hard to manipulate because I've got so much tape on it. Not that. All right. Then for little details like this, this right here, you would use plaster gauze to create that detail. And you can use it just like you use clay. So you get it wet, and then you just make a coil out of it, twist it up. You do need Elmer's glue because the wet plaster doesn't really work well on the dry plaster. It doesn't like to attach itself all the time. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes not. So use some Elmer's glue. Just put plenty of Elmer's glue on there, and then attach your lines the way you want them. So you'll have a little bit of a ridge. You can do some really cool designs with that. If you're doing a Mardi Gras mask, something with a lot of swirls on it, this is totally the way to do it. Okay, okay so you're going to use these materials. You're going to use cardboard and newspaper, recycled materials. If you were making a gas mask, then um, like a cat food can would be a good size for recycled materials. Tape and hot glue, those are going to be your major things. You can't tape or hot glue on wet materials. So don't try to hot glue anything that's wet. Tape, not going to be a good adhesive either. If you really think that it's wet and it needs to be attached, you could use Elmer's glue. Window screen for over the eyes. Wire, if you need to attach something with wire. Let me show you how to do that. All right, this one does not have something attached with wire, but let's pretend that it does. All right, we're going to put on some little alien horns or alien what was it, antennae, it would, that's it, antennae. So you'd make two of whatever it is that you want to hang off the edge. Then you take your wire and you also need to have a piece to attach the wire to your, your mask. So I'd have a little piece here to attach to the end of the wire that I'll hot glue on there. Take my wire, bend it a little bit, bend it a little bit like that so that it's not going to pull straight out. If I have it hot glued in there like that, then that could pull straight out. So I'm going to bend it, I'm going to hot glue it between two pieces like that. So here's my little antennae, if I were doing like a little alien. I'm going to hot glue this wire in there and I'm going to sandwich it in there just like that. Then I would hot glue a little scrap, and you don't need it too big, you know, just hot glue a little scrap on the other end of that wire so you have something to attach it to. This is good if you have 
and a little alien antennas, or if you have stars that are coming off, or a little crown that's just sort of hanging above. This piece of wire doesn't need to be, or this piece of cardboard doesn't need to be too big, but I do need to make sure that it, I can bend that and hot glue that in there. Small pieces, be really careful with that hot glue gun. And then I've got a nice secure piece that I can attach on wherever I needed it to. Okay? And then the plaster gauze, you're going to cover everything that you do with cardboard. You're going to cover all of that with plaster gauze. If you have little bitty pieces, like let's say you have a whole bunch of little planets all the way around your, your mask. You would make all these little pieces, plaster gauze them. You wouldn't need to plaster gauze this piece. I would attach that to your mask and then plaster gauze over that. So anywhere that you have cardboard, you're going to cover it with plaster gauze. Anywhere you have newspaper, you're going to cover it with plaster gauze. Also, your plaster gauze can be used for cool little details like a so. All right, so make sure that at all times your drawing is on your desk. I need for you to make sure that you have it diagrammed so that when I come up, I say, okay, how are you doing this? You can tell me. Well, see right here, I'm making that out of cardboard. So make sure that you have everything diagrammed. All right, be good, be great, be awesome.